3ds max gives us the ability to illuminate our scene with daylighting and it's a pretty automated process you can just drop in a sun and sky and set up where you want the sun and sky to be in terms of where on the planet and then what time and what date and you can see what lighting conditions you would achieve and that's assuming there's no clouds in the sky that's kind of a key thing to keep in mind the sun and sky in 3ds max does not take any clouds into account it's going to be on a perfectly clear sunny day there are different forms of sun and sky if you're using mental ray you would want to create a daylight system but if you're using art then there is a simple way of dropping in your light for the sun and sky and it's called the sun positioner let's create it go to the create panel and under the lights category we've got sun positioner i want to drag that out in the top view it doesn't matter where you put it but what I like to do is position it roughly in a place that makes sense relative to where I want the light to land in my scene. In other words, here's my dining table and I want the light to come streaming in through these windows. And it just makes more sense intuitively if I put the sun positioner out here. And that way I can kind of get a sense just by looking at where that light's gonna land in my scene. Click on sun positioner click and drag in the view to create a compass rose you can drag to set that radius release the mouse and then you drag to set the orientation of the compass rose I'll just leave it at the default of north pointing up and then click again and then drag to set the height or the distance of the Sun away from that compass rose and then finally click to complete the only thing in all those parameters that actually affects your lighting is the rotation of the compass rose. If north is pointed upward here, that assumes that north is pointed upward in the scene. But in fact, the way my plan is laid out here, north is actually pointing down in this case. I want the windows here in the kitchen to be south facing windows. I could rotate the compass rose but I could also just adjust the orientation of that compass rose in its parameters. I can go over to the modify panel and you see north offset. I can set that to 180 degrees and now north is pointing downward and our windows here are south facing. Now you can see we've got a lot of light in the scene here. We're going to have to change our exposure control. But first let's set up where we are in the world and what day it is and what time it is. And back in our sun positioner modify panel, we can go down here and we can set things up manually, but I prefer to do it through the date, time, and location method. All right, so scroll down a bit here, and there's a button that says location on Earth. This loft is currently in San Francisco. I'm gonna put it in Portland, Oregon. I'll click on that button, and then I just click somewhere on the map here, and it'll take me to the nearest major city. Click OK. And then we've got our date and time. I'm going to set this to January 1st, 2017 at 10 a.m. And daylight savings time turned off. We're at Pacific Standard Time here. Notice that when I change these values, like if I go to a different month, that's going to change where the sun is. So in June at 10 a.m., the sun's going to be over here. But... We bring this back to January, the sun's gonna be a different location. All right, so we've set up our location, date and time. Let's go to the perspective view. We'll do a test render, see what it looks like with just draft quality in ART. And it's way overexposed. The sun is many orders of magnitude brighter than any artificial lighting. We'll need to go into our exposure control settings. Go to rendering, exposure control, and here we've got our physical camera exposure control settings. If we were outdoors on a sunny day, we might use an exposure value of 15 maybe. Since we're indoors here, let's set it to a value of let's say 12. Also notice how blue it is. We can even see that here. And that's because the light coming through the window is a combination of direct sunlight and indirect light coming from the sky. And the sky is usually blue so the light coming through those windows is predominantly blue. 
We can change the color temperature of our camera to try to match the color of the light coming through the window. And we can go up here and choose different presets, see what they do. 5200 Kelvin is sunlight, according to this. Let's go to set it manually, maybe. I'll set the color temperature to, let's say, 5500 degrees Kelvin. And that's gonna give us a little bit more orange look. Or I could bring it down to, let's say, 4800 degrees Kelvin. And that's going to balance it a little bit more. The lower I bring that value down, the more blue the rendering is going to be because the color of the light coming from outside is a very blue light. And as I bring this value down, I'm not matching that blue light. Okay, so if it was an incandescent bulb, then this would look white. But because it's blue light coming through, then with a 3200 Kelvin temperature, it's, it's looking really blue. All right, so we can set that to whatever we want. Let's give it like 4,000. And I think that's pretty neutral. We won't really know what we get until we do a test render. All right, so click on render production again. And that's looking pretty good in terms of color temperature, but it's not quite exposed well enough. I kind of want these direct sunlight areas to be brighter. Notice, by the way, that we have an environment outside the window that's generated automatically. Okay, so I'll just change my exposure value. If I want the rendering to be brighter, then I will reduce the exposure value. I'll bring it down by two stops to exposure value of 10, and then do another test render. And that's more like it. I've got kind of a big white splash here for the direct sun. And then everything else is the indirect lighting. What we see outside the window is once again determined by an environment that's dropped into the scene. We can examine those parameters if we want. I'll just close this window. And back in our environment and effects dialog, up at the top, we've got the environment settings. And as soon as we created our sun positioner, an environment got placed into this environment map slot. And that's what we're seeing outside the window. If we need to adjust the environment settings, we need to take this into the material editor. I'll open up the material editor here, click on the button, or press the M key on the keyboard. And I've got something in here already, it doesn't really matter, but I'll just take this button and drag it over into the material editor. I'm prompted whether I want an instance or a copy. I do wanna choose instance so that what I do in the material editor will affect what happens in the environment. And then double click on that physical sun environment. And here we have a whole bunch of properties where we can control things like the intensity and what we see outside the window in terms of what it looks like at night and color of the ground and so on. I'm not gonna go into all of those detailed settings, but I just wanted to show you how you could get to those settings. Cool, so that's how easy it is to create daylighting in 3ds Max using the ART renderer.